You know, I love the words of that old song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. You know, that's the thing about this old world is we try many other things, don't we? We try money, we try success, try drugs, alcohol, sex, relationships. But here's the thing about them. They all come and they all go. It might give you a high mountaintop experience for a moment, but sure as I'm standing here today, it'll leave you cold, broken, and dry in a valley. But when you have Jesus, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he's alive, all fear has to go. Come on, there's nothing greater and nothing stronger than the power of our resurrected Savior. So, Father, we thank you this morning that because you're alive and well, because you got up from the grave and you defeated hell and death forever, we stand here knowing the true source of our hope, knowing the true source of our life, knowing the true source of our peace. So we stand in your sanctuary this morning and we give you praise and glory and honor to the King above kings and the Lord above Lord, the only one who rose from the grave, the only one who can stand and say that even death itself was not powerful enough to break his back. But he's alive forevermore. He's alive forevermore. Come on, give him one shout of praise. Yeah. seated wave to one or two people around you welcome them on resurrection morning amen somebody might be saying i don't know where i am this morning well you were invited to a charismatic pentecostal type church who has a pastor that just gets really really excited about resurrection morning it is the hinge of everything that we believe everything that we know is that jesus is alive you know, if he wasn't alive, his gospel would be dead. If he wasn't alive, his gospel wouldn't be true. But Jesus is alive and well this morning. So welcome to Resurrection Morning at Hope City Church. I also want to welcome anyone who's watching and visiting online this morning. We welcome you, and we're so glad that you're with us today. I do want to remind you, if you are new here today, you can scan the card on the back of your seat. Let us just connect with you and just record your visit for today. In Jesus' name. Well, I want to open with a verse of scripture today that encounters what we're celebrating and the reason that we're here and the reason that we're alive and the reason that we have hope and the reason that we have joy. Found in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. It says this Now, after the Sabbath, the first day of the week began to dawn. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat, uh, it sat on it for, on the door. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook in fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know who you seek, Jesus who was crucified. But he is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, 
and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to the disciples to give them word. You know, to some, these might just be idle words on a page and words that, well, how do we really know? But you know, the story and the life of Jesus, if it was tried in any court system of our day, would be found to be a true story. Not because it's just recorded pages in history, but because these recorded pages in history all came from multiple, multiple witnesses who all proclaim to have seen Jesus crucified on the cross, watched him be buried, and all encountered him after his resurrection. Multiple witnesses recorded their stories. And you might say, well, this was just a farce and something that they did because they didn't want to acknowledge that Jesus had really died. Well, what you need to know is most of these witnesses would go on to be crucified and, and killed and some of them burned in oil, all because of their testimony of what they witnessed, that Jesus was alive. You know, they say that all of the prophecies written in the Old Testament that describe Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. If you were to take the odds of one person fulfilling every single prophecy recorded, it would be like filling the entire state of Texas in three inches of quarters, but marking one of them with a marker. And you being able to, in the entire state of Texas, filled with three inches of quarters, reach down and pick the exact one marked with a marker. Are the logistics of one man fulfilling every one of these prophecies? Jesus is not just a figure in history. Jesus is the true living Son of God. Today, I want to talk to us a little bit for a few moments that we have together about Jesus being a pioneer. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 says this, it was fitting that God, for, whom, uh, for through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. This verse of Scripture reminds us that Jesus is a pioneer of our salvation. I ask you today, what do you think of, what comes to your mind when you think of the word pioneer? When you think of the word pioneer, because the writer of the book of Hebrews describes Jesus just as that, the pioneer of our salvation. And when we read that scripture or that description of him, I wonder what would come to your mind. Do you imagine Jesus sailing the ocean or hacking through a, a forest unexplored with a machete? Do you think of pioneers of today? You might think of Amelia Earhart or Captain James Cook or Christopher Columbus or Steve Jobs or countless others who have pioneered their way through history by having this, this courageous spirit who would dedicate their lives to discovery and progress. A pioneer is defined as someone who is the first to open or prepare a way. The first to open or prepare a way a settlement or a region, opening it for occupation or development by others. In other words, a pioneer is one who goes first before everyone else. They are selfless. They are assertive. They are forward thinkers. They are leaders. But Jesus was the ultimate pioneer. Isaiah 45 verse 2 reminds us, he says, I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break to pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I'll go before you and cut out a path of redemption for you. I'll make a way of settlement where you could not get through before. I'll pioneer a way. 
Jesus was our ultimate pioneer when he died for our sins and he rose from the dead and did what no one else was ever able to do or has been able to do since. Jesus was our pioneer. We are following a man today that went in a direction that other people weren't taking. Even after Jesus blazed this new direction, many people didn't want to follow his new trail. Some of them would crucify him. Others would stand by and watch and did, do nothing at all. Others would deny even ever knowing he existed or knowing his name. And that's true today for us. If we find ourselves following other people, if we find ourselves even following our own self and our own desires and not following the path of the true trailblazer, the true pioneer, if we find ourselves today doing the same kinds of things that everyone around us in society is doing, then we are not following the true path of a pioneer. If we are to recognize Jesus as the pioneer of our salvation, we need to identify the wild country that he pioneered through. We need to discover what exactly did he overcome and what exactly did he defeat. And I think there are two answers to that question. Number one, Jesus isn't described as a pioneer of any ordinary thing. He's described in Hebrews as the pioneer of our salvation. The pioneer of our salvation. The pioneer of deliverance from death the pioneer of deliverance from our old ways and into God's new way. The wild country that Jesus conquered is the separation that mankind faced between humanity and God. The wild country that Jesus pioneered is sin. And Jesus pioneered a new way and a new path for us to get through. I think for us to understand what he pioneered through we have to go back to the beginning of the journey. Your Bible says in the book of Genesis that Jesus, or God, created humanity. He created Adam and Eve in a garden. And his plan for humanity was that we would live in that garden in bliss and beauty with him. The Bible says that he would come down in the cool of the day and talk to Adam and Eve like they were friends. He breathed his own life into them and gave them life. And this was a wonderful relationship that God had with humanity. There was no separation between God and man. That's what we were created to be. That's how we were created to live. But many of us know the story. Satan, the fallen one, approaches Eve in that garden and convinces her to not listen and disobey the voice of God and puts doubt in her heart and in her ears. And from that moment, sin entered the bloodstream of humanity. And from that moment forward, humanity was now separate from God because God being a holy, righteous, true, and just God could not have fellowship nor relationship with a crooked, sinful, broken people. He could no longer come down in the cool of the day in fellowship with what he created. Now he was separated from mankind. And man would try to overcome this obstacle, but they had no success. And even God himself, he understood that because of sin's entrance into humanity's bloodstream, blood would have to be shed in order for people to be saved. So he tried to make a covenant with men multiple men throughout the Old Testament. But every time he would try to make a covenant with a man, the man would fall. The man wouldn't keep up his end of the bargain and it, the, 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 the prospect would be lost. So Jesus came up with a system in the Old Testament and this system was for every sin that you would commit, you would have to go into the temple and you would have to take an animal, the best of your livestock, the best of your cattle, and the priest would have to to cut that animal as a sacrifice for your sin because for every sin, blood had to be spilt. The problem with this was that the blood of an animal still wasn't costly enough to satisfy the righteousness of God. So though man's sins would be atoned for and forgiven for a short period of time, they still weren't 
saved. They still weren't cleansed. So God decided that if he was going to fix the problem, he would have to pioneer a trail of salvation for mankind. And because he couldn't make covenant with man, that he would have to make a covenant with himself. So he decided to pull himself apart and send a portion of himself down into this earth in the form of a man named Jesus. And now he had blood on the earth that he could make covenant with. Jesus lived a pure and spotless life. He didn't sin. He didn't make a mistake. He was tempted, but he didn't do it because he knew the cost that was at stake. And he pioneered a trail through the wilderness of sin and temptation so that we could find salvation and redemption through God. Not only did Jesus pioneer through a way for salvation, he pioneered a way for resurrection. Now Jesus was on the earth. God could make a covenant with man. The potential problem could be solved. But there was still one major factor that humanity had to overcome, and that was the factor of death. See, when God created Adam and Eve in the garden, they were created to live forever. Mankind was never designed to experience the sting of death. But when Adam and Eve fell, it was the entrance of sin's curse that made us experience something we were never created to know. And try whatever formula and freeze your body and do whatever you can do. Man could never escape the fact that death was a reality until Jesus pioneered a way. See, because when Jesus came and lived and he pioneered a way and he made his blood true and spotless, he was able to finally relieve mankind of his burden of death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55 says this, O death, where is your sting? O grave, or Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus removed the sting of death when he died on the cross and resurrected on the third day. And now he offers to all humanity who would call upon his name the, the option and the possibility to be restored just as Adam and Eve was in the garden. He offers them the possibility that when they close their eyes on this people planet, that we are not lost and gone forever, but that we would live in eternity with him in heaven. When Jesus hung on that cross and he breathed his last breath and he echoed the words, it is finished. Satan wasn't truly sure of the plan of God. He tried to stop Jesus along the way, but wasn't quite sure what he was trying to stop him from. So as Jesus hung on the cross and died, Satan began to celebrate. And he began to throw a party and all of hell and all of his demons were rejoicing and celebrating that the Messiah, the Son of God, had the life snuffed out of him. But see, in this time of human history, because Jesus had not yet died on the cross, when mankind would die, if they were atoned by the blood of animals, which means if you followed every rule and every regulation and you did everything right and, and you had the priest cut the blood, you didn't go to hell. The Bible says that there was this other place that was reserved for those who were covered with the blood of animals, but because it was with the blood of animals, they still weren't qualified to enter into heaven, enter into glory. So, as Satan and hell begin to rejoice at the death of Jesus and the party was going, suddenly a voice echoes through the chambers of hell.
there were some patriarchs from the Old Testament who would have been in this place. People like Abel, who had never seen Jesus. He had died long before Jesus ever came to earth, so would have had no, no earthly idea of what Abel or what Jesus would look like. Jesus descended to hell, and the Bible says that he took the keys of life and death from Satan. Because now he had the ability to resurrect with resurrection power to overcome death forever and to redeem those who had died and are in this place. So the, I picture in my mind, if you will, Jesus holding the keys of life and death behind his back, walking up to the prison cell of Abel and saying, Abel, who is it that you're looking for? And Abel saying, I'm looking for the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. I see him walking to Abraham in the Old Testament and saying, Abraham, who is it that you're looking for? And Abraham saying, I am looking for the city whose foundation and builder is God. Moses, who is it that you're looking for? I'm looking for the pillar of fire at night and the cloud by day. Joshua, who is it that you're looking for? And Joshua would declare, I'm looking for the captain of the Lord's host. Jacob, who is it that you're looking for? I'm looking for the one who changed my name after I wrestled him through the night to the breaking of the day. I'm looking for that one. Ezekiel, who is it that you're looking for? I'm looking for the one that I saw in a vision that was a wheel spinning in the midst of a wheel. Zechariah would declare, I am looking for the fountain of David who brings the springs of life eternal. John, who is it that you're looking for? I'm looking for the one who baptizes in fire. Isaiah, who is it that you're looking for? And he would say, I am looking for the virgin born who will be called Wonderful, Counselor, and Prince of Peace. And I see Jesus in that moment pulling the keys from behind his back and saying, you need look no further because I am he, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. And because you have believed in me, my blood has atoned for your sins. And he would set those prisoners free forever. So because of the work on the cross and because of his resurrection, Jesus has become the pioneer of our salvation. He's become the one that you've really been looking for. The one you've really been waiting for. It's not that people don't believe that they need a savior. They do. They just don't know what will save them. Like I said earlier, some may think I will find a savior in a relationship, in a spouse, in a boyfriend or a girlfriend, only to have their hearts broken in pieces. Some say, I know that I need a savior, but I will find it in financial security. If I have enough money surrounding me, then I'll be happy, then I'll be saved, and then I'll be secure only to climb to the top of success and find themselves still lonely and broken and searching. Some say, I will find my salvation through the abuse of a substance, only to find themselves after the effects of the substance wears off, still lonely, still broken, searching for their next Savior. Who is it that you're looking for? Jesus has become the pioneer of our salvation. He has become the one who has defeated death itself so that you could live. And he says, all you have to do is not bring an animal anymore. I was the animal. Not make a sacrifice. I was the sacrifice. He would say that all you have to do is follow the pioneers path. Follow the pioneer's path and you'll find life. Matthew 7, 13. 
speaks of this path. And he says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few will find it. Tim, you can come. The Bible says that there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is destruction. A pioneer's path is not an easy path. A pioneer's path is a narrow path. But nevertheless, it's a path that was cleared for you and I. I echo the words of Jesus this morning as he would have set the patriarchs of old free after his death. And I ask you this question, who is it that you're looking for? Today you have come to a church service on Easter morning, and maybe for you, you were drugged here, or not drugged, but dragged here, excuse me. We don't condone that. <laughs> Maybe you were dragged here, guilted to come, whatever. Or maybe you came because it's a tradition to you and your family. But it's that. It's just a tradition. And this Jesus that I'm talking about today, you wouldn't recognize him in this light or in this manner as a savior. Relationships aren't bad. Money's not bad. But when they become your source, they become wrong. Jesus has become the pioneer of your salvation. The one who, despite everything else that would come against you in life, could give you hope, joy, and a future beyond your wildest hopes and dreams. And that's how you stand in a crazy world and in a crazy life. You have disappointment and you have heartache and you have down days and days where it seems like everything in your life is going wrong. But the difference between the believer and the unbeliever is that we stand not on uh, sand as a foundation. We stand on Christ, the solid rock, our sure foundation. And when we're disappointed and when we're angry and when life has hurt us in the most terrible ways, we can stand secure because we have a pioneer of our salvation. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I would be amiss this morning if I did not present to you the path of a pioneer. And that path, the Bible says, is simply a prayer. It says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He is the resurrected one, and you confess that with your mouth, then at the conclusion of that prayer, because you've believed and because you have spoken, you will be saved. You will be in right relationship with God. And every single thing that you've ever done wrong is washed away forever. And the Bible says your name is written in the books of heaven, securing your home, securing your eternal destination if we could stand to our feet this morning. So I want to present this opportunity to you this morning with every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask you in just a moment if you want to make Jesus your Savior. What I'm bringing to you today is a roadmap of what Jesus did for you. And all you have to do is accept it. But if you want to make Jesus your savior, all I'm gonna ask you to do with every eye closed at the count of three, I'm gonna ask you just to slip up your hand and I'm not gonna do anything to embarrass you. I just wanna recognize that you're praying this prayer. And then at the conclusion of that prayer, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved and your name written in the Lamb's book of life. If that's you today, on the count of three, I want you to just to slip up your hand Ready? One, two, three. If that's you, just put your hand up. I see you. I see you. I see you. 
I recognize you. I see you. I see you. You can put your hands down. I see you there in the back as well. We're going to pray this prayer together, but if this is your first time praying this prayer, I want you to pray it with all of your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now, and I confess that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior and that you are the pioneer of my salvation. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross for the payment of my sin, and I receive it now. So I confess you as Lord, and I ask you to take over my life. I give it to you. I'll follow you all the days of my life. And I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that right now I am saved. Come on. For those of you who have just prayed that prayer, and I want you to know even if you didn't raise your hand but you prayed that prayer, for those of you who prayed and believed that prayer, you may not feel any different right now, but everything's different right now. Your eternity has changed. Your destination has changed forever. Heaven rejoices right now, the Bible says, because you have made a decision. So there are some steps I want to encourage you to move forward. If you leave today, I want you to stop by Connections and simply ask for a believer's box. And it's just some stuff to get you started. And we want you to get plugged into a Bible preaching church. And I'm not saying this because I'm a pastor. If it's not here, that's all right. Go somewhere where you can be plugged in and taught the word of God so you can grow in your journey of faith together. And daily turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's give one more hand for those who have made that call today. We're going to take a moment and worship the Lord. Look up, your help is on the way. Turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for, look for in his wonderful face.
in the light of his glory and grace there is freedom healing filling this place in the light of his glory that you have provided for not just dying to be our sacrifice and our lamb but for defeating the biggest enemy that we could ever know death itself thank you for giving us life eternal we're never the same because of it father in Jesus name let the church say amen amen you can go ahead and be seated just for a moment If you are new today or just visiting, today not only marks Resurrection Day and a day of celebration in that regard, today's another day of celebration for Hope City Church. Earlier this year, we cast a vision as we have responded to COVID and recognizing that most of our ministry and connection with people is done online and through media. The Lord placed a vision in our heart to launch a streaming network that would broadcast the message of Jesus Christ around the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when the Lord first began to speak to me about this, I began to feel like, who? Us? Here? Now? It's a huge undertaking. But over the last several months, we have diligently worked to build a network that would do just that not just with content and, and messages and worship and preaching from this house, but from very well-known leaders in the Christian faith and ministries from around the world have all connected with us and joined us in our venture to, again, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's been an amazing miracle to watch happen. I don't know if you know that, but an amazing miracle to watch happen today after day to get calls from uh, very large ministries, world-known ministers, and say, yeah, we will come on with what you're doing. Well, we'll be a part of that. And it's been an amazing thing. And today, we are going to launch that network and make it go live around the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until the second coming of Jesus Christ. We're going to keep his message going forward. Are you excited about that? I am. So, Pastor Travis Kerr, if you could come, if there's any other leaders in the back, elders, if you could come as well, and if you could stand on your feet, 
First, what you need to know is this is symbolic. This doesn't really do much. But it is a symbolic because all the network stuff is already up and ready to go. And this weekend, we've been streaming the Life of Jesus movie to celebrate Easter around the clock. But this is a moment where we're celebrating officially the launch of this network, Pioneer Network. Now, I do want to remind you, it is available um, on every uh, device that you have. You can just search Pioneer Network now and download the app. It's all free. We don't charge anything. Are you glad about that? A lot of people tried to say, well, if you just charge them to sign in, it'll all be okay. And I just felt like I don't want to put a price tag on the gospel. We're going to make it free for everybody. So we did that. So any device you have, you can do that. You can find it on Roku. You can find it on Amazon TV. You can find it on Apple TV. Anywhere you can download the, uh, apps, you can find Pioneer Network. So we're glad about that. So what we're going to do is we could put our hands together over this, guys. And will you join us in counting down as we launch this network? I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have entrusted us with this opportunity to stand in this place and spread your gospel around the world. Lord, we don't take it lightly, but we take it as a, a divine purpose, a divine inspiration for us. So Lord, we will foster it well. With every day, every breath, we will move forward to see the gospel go forth in Jesus' name. So let's count this down together. Are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, here we go. We follow the pioneer forward. Well, I want to thank you for celebrating with us today and being a part of Resurrection Morning and a part of this network and our launch today. Do download the app and take it with you anywhere you go. So before you dismiss, Miss Lindsay's going to come and she's going to close our service with a few announcements. <laughs>